Hello Internet, it's me again. Surprise, surprise. Now, in this video, we have got the first game of round four, which is the quarterfinal of this Manchester Street Pass tournament. And um, I do recognize this guy, I've seen him at a few other events before. Uh, I can't remember playing him, I'm not sure if I have before, but um, because I've seen him before, I'm thinking he must know what he's doing, he must know how to play this game. But I just basically need to win this game, this uh, best of three set, to get this uh, invite to the grand final, basically, because it's the top four in the um, in each event gets through to the grand finals of the Manchester tournament um, that will be held in um, next month in November. And so there's a little bit of pressure in this game, pressure for both of us, I suppose, um, because you know I always tend to sort of trip up at the last hurdle, which <laughs> is typical, really, but. Let's have a look at this game. Let's see how it goes. Um, he seems to have quite a, a, a solid team. Um, I suppose you know you'd have to to get uh, four rounds in in this um, single elimination format. He leads with Kangaskhan and Aegis Slash, which can be a little bit of a problem. I lead with my uh, Talonflame actually. Um, I'm expecting his Aegis Slash to be a little bit threatened. Um, you know, I could taunt it. I could flare blitz it. And I do want to get some damage onto this Kangaskhan as well. So what I do is I actually use Fake Out on the Kangaskhan, hoping that it hasn't got inner focus, <laughs> and Flare Blitz the Kangaskhan, because there's always a chance of getting a burn as well. That's why it's better than Flare Blitz. And oh, look, I get the burn. So all these times I go for Flare Blitz instead of Bravehood for, for that exact reason. It pays off for me just now. And he actually goes for a substitute with his Aegislash. Slash. So, he could have got a good chunk of damage off on either of my Pokemon. Um, Talonflame, not sure if that's in Shadow Ball range, maybe. But he actually goes for Substitute, and it's, it's surprising how many times people actually do this. And, uh, you know, happened in my Round 2 game as well, as you, you might have seen in the video. People use Substitute in front of my, my Raichu with Encore, probably thinking that the Substitute prevents the Encore. But, unfortunately, uh, for me, it doesn't. Uh, or well, rather fortunately for me it doesn't, unfortunately for him it doesn't, and so this turn, uh, my moves are, are very simple. Brave Bird this turn, that burn actually didn't make any difference looking at that, did it really? I can just Brave Bird the Kangaskhan and Encore this Aegislash. And so, uh, I've got all of the momentum, um, he's in a, a sticky situation again because he's basically got one, or for like three turns anyway, got a useless Pokemon out there. Um, doing nothing, offering mo no offence, no offering no momentum to him. And so, uh, what's he going to do? Well, he brings in his Azumarill, and I make a, uh, well, I, I make a, a move, as we can see here. I'm actually double targeting this Azumarill. I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying it that way because he could have easily protected this Azumarill and switched out his Aegislash and uh, got back a bit more momentum that way. But... He didn't, and he shows a Citrus Berry there, so it's not an Assault Vest one, it, it will have Protect. This double target actually knocks out the Azumarill, so I do learn it's got a Citrus Berry. Uh, it could potentially have Belly Drum, you know, they, they tend to, I suppose, if they've got a Citrus Berry. But he didn't choose to, to make a, a safe, nice defensive play there to, to uh, protect and, and withdraw and bring his Hydreigon in. And so, basically, what I've got to do here is not throw the game away. I'm in a very good position. This is just my lead, isn't it, really? But I do know that now Encore is going to end after this turn, and my Raichu hasn't got Protect. He is free to, uh, because a Brave Bird won't knock out his uh, um, Hydreigon from here, he is free to go for a Draco Meteor, and providing it has got the choice specs, it will knock out my Raichu from here, and that will stop me getting the Encore next turn. So what I do here is I bring my Raichu out and I use Brave Bird with my Talonflame knowing that the recoil damage from Brave Bird will knock my own Talonflame out which will get my own Raichu a free switch in next turn so I can get the guaranteed Encore on his Aegislash next turn, basically. That was my, that was my train of thought. If he did, uh, well if his Hydreigon actually wasn't choiced, if it turned out to have Protect, then um, that might have turned out to be a bit of a, a bit of a sticky play, but uh, it didn't. Um, I, you, well, I think you, most people do tend to assume that Hydreigon are choiced in uh, some way um, these days. 
which I'm not particularly too big of a fan of, to be honest. But, uh, you know, it does lots of damage, so why not put some spectacles on it? And, uh, he, yeah, he decides to lock himself into Flash Cannon, basically. I mean, the game is pretty much over at this point. He locks himself into Flash Cannon, which tells me that it is choice, it is choice specs. And, um... I suppose he does that because he thinks that I might have my Tyranitar in the back, which I do. Um, Amoongus can take two uh, flash cannons like that, get a bit of regenerator now, gets the spore off, puts the Hydreigon to sleep. The Aegis Slash is still encored into um, Substitute, isn't it? So basically, what I've got to do here is just play sensibly. Um, and by sensibly, I mean not knock my own Pokemon out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I can yeah I can hidden barrelize that and I can substitute that and um, all I've got to do now is just close the game out basically. Thunderbolt surprisingly doesn't actually knock out this substitute. I think that is a bit of a roll there. And um, I don't mega evolve this Tyranitar and I just go for a crunch. I'm not mega evolving this Tyranitar because I don't need to. Uh, but also. I don't want, well, I mean, it, it, it really makes no difference, to be honest, but, um, you know, in the next game, Mega Evolving won't be so uh, prominent in his mind um, from my Tyrant time Mega Evolving, basically. Not that it would really make any difference, but, uh, you know, I'm just, I just like to, what I like to do is basically when I've got a game sealed like this, uh, see, I'm, I'm using Dragon Dance there, and, and what I'm about to say will explain why I was a little bit iffy about even going for Dragon Dance there. When I've got the game basically sealed up like this, I like to show as little as possible. Um, obviously, you know, Tyranitar is mega, but I don't want to show it, I don't want to put any more information, any more suggestions into his mind, because I want to have, you know, from, from reading him point of view, I want to have um, full knowledge of what he knows of my team, basically. Um... And so, you know, I did show him the Dragon Dance there, I did show him, um, not much else though, but, uh, you know, to be honest, people know my team anyway, so it really, really doesn't make too much of a difference, and I'm just making words out of my mouth into this microphone now, and, and you poor people out there are probably sitting there thinking, oh, what's he talking about? And so, um, let's, <laughs> so let's say goodbye, because, um, Game 2 will be coming up tomorrow, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so hopefully you've enjoyed watching this. Please feel free to, uh, you know, support the channel, do all the clicky business and the YouTube business and all the rest of it, all the nice stuff. So, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys, and uh, bye for now.